Everyone ready to go? Um, my name is Greg Gallup. For those who I don't know and you don't know me, I've been um, coming on to these meetups since they began, just about. Um, we've got quite a few new faces here though tonight, so that's good to see. Tonight, um, as, we, as Kerry put up on the meetup, it's all about internet, uh, oh, sorry, affiliate marketing. It's all about affiliate marketing. Um, and in particular, Chris is going to run through later on about uh, a bit more focus on the site that he's just built. Um, we've got Zane here from Commission Factory, who's going to start off with a um, just an over, overall on, on, on affiliate networks and how it, how it all comes together from, from his point. Um, and Zane's actually a locally based um, uh, Commission Factory, which is an affiliate network where they they coordinate the the shops basically, the products, and the, and the affiliate marketers on the other side, and bring it all together, and they're focused on the Australian market, which is really going to see how they're local here. So, it's a ton of information here, ton of ton of knowledge and background. Um, so, we're going to have a short um, Q and A and presentation of Q and A. We want to keep the, the questions general. Um, if there's something particular for your site, for your niche, whatever, grab him later on if you can. All right. Okay, I'm saying. I agree. Just that um, I'm, I'm going to film it and I'll upload the video to our Facebook group too, okay. so if you're worried about missing anything, it'll be there. There you go. I'll be on YouTube. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Zane. So. Right, thank you very much. So yes, once again, my name is Zane McIntyre, the director of Commission Factory. We actually just celebrated our first birthday on Sunday, and we went out for dinner. <laughs> we remember of it. And um, to celebrate one year, because when we started, there really wasn't um, networks that were really on par with the guys that were overseas. So my history as an affiliate was <coughs> working with a lot of the uh, overseas networks because the guys in Australia just really weren't doing a very good job. So we looked at what we loved about the guys overseas and how we can bring that here to Australia make Australia the focus for as long as we could or as long as was sustainable because the industry is so much smaller and a lot more immature here. Um, I went over to London a couple of years ago to the FU Expo that they do over there and that was a real eye-opener for how mature the industry is over there. I mean they have rules, regulations, laws surrounding all that and more keep coming in unfortunately. So yes anyways I'll, I'll get started. So that's it. Um, pass that one. So myself, I came from a background of graphic design. That's what I also brought to Commission Factory: affiliate marketing, graphic design, and just general marketing. We also have a guy who's proficient in sales. Something I don't didn't really want to do because most companies I work for don't like me on the phones because I'm generally rude. So. <laughs> um, you know, one of those people that call up with a problem and it would have been like, yeah, so, so I'm not allowed on the phones. Um, but I'm good with the affiliates. I can talk their lingo and they can talk mine. So. And we also are one of the lucky ones where we have an in-house programmer. So that allows us to adapt and change constantly. So that's actually why right now I'm feeling relatively exhausted. We've had, we're on the cusp of releasing Commission Factory 2. And... Um, We've had a year to basically do trial and error, find out what our affiliates want and you know, what works for them. And, and also, we, we've learned to get tougher in the meantime as well, tougher on merchants who come to us with no real um, foresight or business plan, what they're doing. You know, So that's usually very interesting, but I won't go into that because there's so many things I could say about some of the online skills. <laughs> Um, okay, so we've just hit over 1,600 affiliates, so that was, you know, exciting. We celebrated even at 1,000. We've actually slowed down the growth of our affiliates because we screen them all automatically against databases for um, if you spammed forums, sent email spam, any of those types of things. Um, we're checking your IP and the usernames that you're entering in, the email address you're entering in. If any of those match a blacklist, we won't let you sign up. So, We've actually limited the amount of affiliates we, we have on our network, but it's worked out because the merchants are really happy because they're getting higher quality affiliates. 
Um, so we have 80 live, 80 plus live merchants. We have about another 70 um, sitting in the back end at the moment, either for various reasons. They might need to make some updates. Their site might be up to the hideous and I won't let it go live. So they sit there and in limbo until that happens. Um, we've had 100% growth every month since we've launched. So that's been great for us. So I find we've been able to take away from the business, which is you know, really, really good. So now I'm saying that I actually am selling off a lot of my old affiliate websites and properties. I don't have the time for them anymore. And um, developed partnerships with over 10 companies. So one of the ones that's coming up, if any of you are doing any of your own bookkeeping and you're going for the whole cloud concept, we use Zero at Commission Factory and we're also now integrating Zero completely in with our system so that affiliates and merchants can um, you know, do their bookkeeping a lot simpler so that invoices and money, when it's moving around, go straight to your accounting software. And yes, over 100,000 lines of code so far. So that's why the program has it's really been. All right, so as a network, what is it that we generally do? So this is just some of the basics, the things that we would usually tell a merchant. So it's the sales tracking. So that's usually the very the hard part. We track using the traditional cookies. We have IP address and flash. We also have nine other um, proprietary forms of tracking that we're currently working on. What stops us from releasing them is we need to ensure that if someone puts on an affiliate link, that that transition through an affiliate link to the end user of the merchant website is as fast as possible. If it slows down by any you know, millisecond, we keep, um, we'll take it back out and keep retesting it. Um, kind of, you don't really want the customers always to know that they're always being redirected. It gives them a chance to hit the back button or close the window. Um, we give access both for, for merchants to affiliates and the, um, affiliates to the merchants. We do compliance and security monitoring, so we do PPC monitoring, so if you're bidding on a merchant's trademarks or brands and we catch you, you'll forfeit all your commissions and you'll be gone, because you're not allowed to do that. But it's just cannibalizing their own sense, and you know, they reserve the right to that mark. So, tools and resources, there's a lot of those, and one of those tools that I, I'm going to go into a little bit later. I need to be louder. Um, let's see. Support, well, that just comes with the job. So uh, we help the merchants integrate. If we don't natively support their um, cart software, we'll, our program will do something to help them. We adapt to new technology, so as new things happen, such as you know, the cookie laws and such start coming out, we find new ways to get around the cookie laws. Um, not illegal ways, just other ways of doing it. Um, and program growth strategy. So that's usually one of the biggest things we have to discuss with merchants when they come on board with us, is how to grow their program. Um, they need to do it. It's a self-managed system. So if they are coming on, they need to show some dedication. We do help, but um, we need to see that somebody's actually going to put in the effort. Because in affiliate marketing, you only get out of the budget. Now briefly how it works, so just, I'll go through this really quickly because most of you have already heard me give this spiel. Um, apologies if it crashes, it's all crashes. <coughs> so it starts with um, the customer looking for a product or a service. <coughs> then we're going to do a Google search for that said product. Um, so 85% of people are actually researching before they're buying now. And it's taking up to three um, visits or three pages of websites before someone actually commits to a purchase now. Because everyone's becoming more savvy. They know to research before they're buying. Um, so the, the hope is that either you're going to show up on Google or there are other, many other ways to um, refer customers. We've got WordPress, Logger, whether it's using Bing, I don't really know anybody that uses that. Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, all the rest of it. So someone is hopefully going to go to one of your links somewhere out there. They do that and 
redirected to the merchant website, select that they want to buy a particular product, and that of course is then tracked through us and attributed to the affiliate, so depending on what the commission rate is that that merchant is set. So um, it all depends on the niche you're in. Um, fashion niches are anywhere from 10 to 20% commission. Um, what about clients, the iconic, you may have seen them doing TV advertising at the moment. So they were one of the highest, they were offering 20%. They recently had to reduce it down to 15% because 20% was more an introductory rate and it was um, not really sustainable. I had to question them when they started if they really, really wanted to stay at 20%. Data feeds is the topic for tonight. So I'm just going to go briefly into what it is and um, how we supply them. So, data feeds are a catalogue of products by a particular merchant. So, range anywhere from 10 to, well, the iconic is 55,000. Um, they either manually provide them to us and we will upload it into their um, dashboard, or they give us a URL, URL and we automatically retrieve it every night or well, every morning that we're coming in, um, just to ensure it's always up to date. Um, it contains, well, a lot of information we ask for, the more the better. But um, SKUs, so product IDs, product names, description, image links, the URL. Um, could even be brands, manufacturer, season, year, gender, all those sorts of things. So they'll, their entire catalogue sorted like that. Um, numerous formats you can download in, so CSV, just easily open it up in uh, Excel, XML. Some people prefer it because they either hook directly into that XML feed. JSON, I have no idea. That's something that the programmer just recently added in. I don't even know what that really is, but I was told I should put it in there. And access via URL, so they can just get a URL and automatically download it periodically if they want to. And the affiliates can download these files, upload them, import them into their blogs, which I'll show you a brief example of what that looks like. Um, WordPress is great for that, and WordPress, of course, is free, so most a lot of affiliates do use that. Magento has some capabilities. Um, I don't know how far it goes. The other problem sometimes with some of the cart software is they're expecting you to actually um, hold a lot of the, you can't really link individual products off site a lot of times, so you'd have to create pages, and that could mean if you were promoting something like the Iconic, you have 55,000 products which you need to maybe write unique. Descriptions for. Not a lot of people have that sort of time. <clears throat> so here would be one that was downloaded today. This would be from the iconic. So the highlighted line there is you know what shows up in a feed um, or the, the CSV or Excel. And importing into a website is kind of that sort of scenario. There. So <coughs> we have images. We break down, we're one of the only networks that really break images down into different sizes for consistency. So anywhere from 50 by 50 pixel thumbnails up to you know, 400 by 400 plus the original size of whatever they supply. Um, we host all the images on our content delivery network as well, so that if there's any slowdown with the merchant website, it shouldn't affect your sites. As long as our CDN isn't down. Now a quick example. So hopefully we don't have um, anybody that's too prudish, because here's a website that most people would not I work, operate with a lot within underwear, lingerie, adult toys sort of niches and this is one of those websites so it's men's underwear and the really raunchy stuff too so we review it and all of that stuff at the top that's on sale that's all just brought in automatically from these data feeds um, let's give around any sort of page on there we you know, break it down to brands and styles it's clothing and um, such Clicking on any of these things individually down the review section is actually handwritten content that's not stuff brought in by the um, feeds. The feeds are exact copies of what's on a merchant website, and so you know, it's sometimes not always that well written, especially when they outsource it to India. <laughs> and that would be a product page or for a brand, more so. So that's automatically populated once again by a data feed. Um, I don't have to go in there and style any of that, that all just pulls itself right in. So that entire site was built using WordPress, Swagger theme, and Product Press. 
um, product press I will go into. Now Swagger is a responsive theme and I went with this one. If, if you don't know what responsive is, it means that it will adjust the design depending on the screen size. So that was to cater towards people that are on tablet devices and iPhones and varying screen sizes these days. Um, that theme was about maybe fifteen dollars. I actually paid for one, surprisingly. <laughs> but if they're good enough, I'll pay for them. So, um, and it has everything in there to really help you build a very clean looking website. So I mean, it's fantastic. Um, all right. So now, now the product press plugin. So and if you wrote it down, you probably won't find it anywhere at this point in time. Um, so our developer made it. Um, I've been using it for actually many, many years, but it's now, I mean, that gave me, <coughs> as an, when I was an affiliate, that was my advantage over other affiliates. I had this thing, I was able to build stores very fast and very quickly. Um, I don't need to put a stranglehold on it so much anymore because I don't have the time for all the affiliate marketing that I used to do. So we're going to open it, we're going to polish it and release it to everyone. Um, so it, up, you upload a CSV feed into the plugin. You will have to map what fields are in that, you know, in your data feed to what's in product press. It has specified fields. You just have to map them, basically tell it what's, what's what. And then it'll generate short codes that display products. So underneath there, that is a short code. That was, that was something that you would see once you've imported all the products in. You paste the short code into a page and then you publish it. Um, for example, so that page I showed you before with all the underwear on it, this is, this, that's all that's written on that page. This is an introduction and that short code. And then essentially I hit publish and then that's what it looks like. So it does a lot of the work for you there. Um, and that's in beta, is it? Something you're putting out? Yeah, something that we're putting out. Well, be able to so. accept other short codes as well. Um, it generates the short codes, mm -hmm. so you tell it fields and how you want things displayed, and what currencies, that sort of thing, and um, then it will put them in. It's not going to bring in anything else as short codes. It has short codes sent out. It's basically for data feeds and data feeds you pull in. That's um, really all it's going to be doing now. Whether or not we're Opening up outside of our network, we haven't really decided. We sort of, if we build it for our network, it means that we have, um, we can make it easier because affiliates can use the plugin to log in to their commission factory accounts, see the range of their fields, <coughs> so their fees, and just automatically use them. So, and then anybody else will probably be a more manual process, and that's why we're sort of deciding right now whether or not we um, open it up past that, and. Yes, I said coming to Commission Factory Affiliates. So that was still 15 minutes worth. So that's me for tonight. But um, so I tried to run through as quickly as possible. Um, I will make myself available to anybody that wants to ask more in depth questions afterwards. It's probably better to work it that way because I'm sure I've done this for years. There's going to be a lot of in the middle stuff that I'm not going to um, think to even talk about. So by all means. Does anybody have any generic questions? I do. Um, so when you say you download the CSV file and then upload, upload that to your WordPress site or your mm -hmm. WordPress plugin, yep. um, what do you do when there are updates coming from the merchants? Do you have to re-download the CSV site file or is there something there? The current beta version, yeah, it's, it's a manual process. Oh, yes. I mean, see, I um, usually, the changes sometimes overnight with their products is sometimes minute. And, and as it is, if a product is no, no longer exists on a merchant website, through our affiliate links, if it doesn't exist, you'll do, redirect to the home page. So it'll still all track. Um, it's just, it won't probably convert as high as if you send it to that product directly, which is always the benefit. If you're sending, if you have a whole range of products, but you know the only affiliate link you have is sending it to the home page, your conversion rates will be really, really low. So conversion rates using data feeds are much, much higher because you're going direct to a product that they're already interested in. So all of your 1,600 merchants, maybe 1,600 affiliates. Yes. Yes. 80 merchants, what? 80 merchants, yeah. You get a data feed in from the merchant. 
Yes, oh, they're not allowed to go live if they don't have one because I feel they're only limiting their success because they'll come to me bitching and moaning weeks later when it's not working. So, um, so you put the plugin, um, takes all those data feeds and basically loads them up. So your, your affiliates go in and just pick out which products they want from which stores they want. Yep. Load them up onto the site through, through the data feeds. That's right, that's right. Yeah, they will. Yeah, eventually. So we'll just be logging in using their affiliate IDs and their username passwords so that then we can get to our system. Our entire system is now built with an API um, which we're releasing to the public to develop their own applications. Um, we're just not doing it at this point because whilst our own system is using its own API, we need a couple of months of testing to roll that out if it's got to be right. Yes? So when they come to, say for example we set up an affiliate site uh, with all the data feed in there, so when they actually click to buy a product, what happens then? They'll go straight to the merchant website. Ah, okay. Yeah, directed from there. Um, it will automatically do all the links as no follow as well. If they're not cloaked, they're um, just no follow. It's just to try and limit the amount of link juice going on your website. Yeah. Any more questions? So when they click on that product page, does that take them into a deeper explanation of that product page that you mentioned? You can do that if you want to. Um, one of the, the, the main brand pages that you've seen um, there. Um, before was um, so those at the moment they will they will go directly to the merchant at this point. Well, on a page like this, um, the plugin can also automatically generate posts as drafts that you can go in and edit a little bit if you like, and then put them right one by one if you want. It's just sometimes you're going to find it really hard to rank if you know you've copied everything exactly. So um, I write all the content myself, usually about anywhere from 200 to 250 words per piece of underwear, which is a real struggle sometimes to <laughs> write that much about, you know, it's a brief. Don't you know, say Kerry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you think about the piece of Well, I didn't, I didn't know that much either, but now I'm an expert on the next all about men's underwear. In fact, I mean, you can get to a point with a site like this where you are generating so much traffic for your merchant. So, at how long I keep this website, like I said, this one, like all my others, is for sale. So, I can make an offer. Um, because they are also talking to me at this point in time about actually buying the site from me and turning it into another store for themselves. Because it ranks, you know, basically where they are. I outrank them in most terms as well. So, Instead of competing with me, they just want to buy me. So that can sometimes be the benefit of doing these sorts of websites. Plus, you get lots of free things. So you write a <laughs> description for every product. Every product, yes, I do. I do. I mean, there's only about I would say 700 posts on that site now. Now I haven't worked on it in maybe five months. Um, those were written over the course of three or four years. Um, it was just a process, just a couple of days. Um, well, actually, that's, I also had another plugin developed, which is where I could actually just load in um, an Excel spreadsheet of my um, con my reviews, which would you know automatically post maybe one a day or one every twelve hours. So I mean that type of thing, you know, looked wonderful for Google. I was I think I ranked number one for men's underwear for quite some time when I was doing that. Yes. So they custom post types. Yes. Okay. Yes, they can be. Yeah. Well, I mean, currently no, but that's what yeah, okay. it's going to be yeah. in the, in the um, actual released version. Yeah. Just the post types, and you can bring the set on that simple for which one of these. Yeah, it'll work with yeah any any things only because it's using a lot of that short code and stuff, and, and I mean the custom post types as well helps. But yeah, it should work with any. It hasn't broken yet in four years, so. Okay, wonderful. Thanks, Wayne. Yes, thank you. It's the nitty gritty of it. Um, Chris, you've used um, Chris is uh, the owner of uh, Divide, 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 Division, Division, <laughs> Division um, website building and graphic design guru of the, of the Sunshine Coast. Um, 
most of you know Chris, if you don't then um, make yourself known to him later on, he's pretty talky. Um, Chris, Chris has just built uh, a site using yep. data feed um, and in collaboration with um, Commission Factory a fair bit as well for what yeah, I yeah, for site. Um, I had a bit, of, a bit of a look at the site the other day and we all liked it. Everybody get the, to like your site to get the love up. Um, Chris is going to run through how he put it together and just show us a little bit of the actual hands-on stuff with relation to building the whole thing. Thanks, Greg. Okay, well, um, yeah, thanks very much for coming along. It's good to see a, a few new faces here as well. Um, basically, what I want to talk about today is um, the latest site, which I've actually just created, which is Shop-A-Lot. And um, basically what Shop-A-Lot is, it's more or less, as Aim was saying, it's an affiliate-based site, but it's um, a full shopping site as well. But I don't actually have to have any of the products myself. So basically all the products feed through, through a data feed, a lot of them from Commission Factory, a few other networks too, and it's all Australian. But um, before I go through this, I actually want to go through a few steps first. And basically, um, Get a PC. <laughs> 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 Basically, I'm going to show you how you go out and create and automate the affiliate products like the easy way. Now, um, I started affiliate marketing a few years ago now, and I started with some small sites to start with, mainly in the, um, the travel industry, because I have a lot of clients who do travel based um, businesses. So I thought that's a good way, because I know a bit about travel. Um, and I, I sort of did all right with that kind of thing. I started up, it was a bit slow to start, but to be honest, I sort of you know, had a few hits and misses with it. I was doing, you know, started with a WordPress site and, and did, um, well actually I started with HTML first and I moved to WordPress about two or three months later because HTML just wasn't really working to the level I wanted it to. Um, so then I built the, the WordPress site and basically with the WordPress site, um, it was doing quite well as far as rankings go. I targeted niche markets like they say to do all that kind of stuff and I actually found in the first year, I think it was about the 11th month, I actually did $100,000 worth of sales on, on this one site in one month. I was pretty impressed with that, and so obviously you know, I don't get that whole money myself, it would be great if I did. But, um, but I sort of really looked at the power of it then, and, um, and so I set up another few travel sites as well, and I kept doing the blogging and all the other stuff as well. Um, but then the accommodation market all sort of dried up a bit, and the travel dried up, and it's still you know, going well, and I still have all those sites that I've created, and, and now I've sort of done a few sites for London and New York and a few other places as well. But the problem is when you keep you know, building more and more sites up, you've got to do more and more work. Like you've got to keep the blogging going, you've got to keep all the SEO going, and all the other stuff like that. So I really want to look at a different way to do something and do something bigger and, and better, but make it a lot easier at the same time. And so I sort of went out there and did a little bit of a look around, and that's when I found out about doing the whole data feed type of thing. And so um, I want to run through what I've done, but also before that, I want to sort of go through just quickly the process of how I got to this stage too. Because when you build a site, you know, a decent size site, there's a fair bit of work involved in it. So what I actually want to do through, go through is what I call the six P's of successful affiliate marketing. Um, so the first thing is, is basic planning. So when, you know, when you look at planning, I guess a good example is like you look at the three little pigs and basically you know, the first little pig, he built his, head, his, his little house out of, um, what was it, straw? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> and so you know, he, he sort of you know, did a little thatched roof and probably put a few poles up and things like that. He had this nice little house which he thought was really good. But of course, you know, it didn't last very long, the wall came and blew it down. So the next pig came along and, and you know, he thought, oh, oh, you stick on my house now, it's a bit stronger. So he put up a few poles and got his twine and everything and you know, gave it a bit of shake to make sure it was sturdy, but that wasn't good enough either. So here they, the third pick's sitting back and watching these two guys and, and looking at what they're doing and everything. And he thought, I'm going to go with a different perspective. I'm going to, I'm going to really plan this, this house out. So he actually got his bit of paper and put out a bit of a mud map of what he wanted to do. Got the foundations laid and you know, nice and sturdy concrete. He got up his posts and you know, really drilled them in properly and everything. And he put his roof on and everything. And sure enough, you know, the house lasted. The wolf came along and didn't get anywhere with it. So I mean, that's what it came down to, was he actually analysed his competitors first and realised what they were doing wrong to actually work out how to do something better. And, um, and basically, what you do, you look at what makes things stand out and also what features they have that make them great. And what I always do before I do any of my sites at all, especially this one in particular, is I go in and look at all the, all the big sites out there. So for this one, I did a bit of research as far as like looking at um, Dick Smith and Big W and even the big companies overseas like Gap Jennings and things like that and look at all the features they, they have on their site which work really well and then I'll take those features so it might be I love the navigation for instance the drop down or something um, I might like the um, you know how they do their you know, email marketing list I might like how they have their sliders on the page or something how they have their, their sales specials display and things like that and then I'll sort of jot all that down and take their concept ideas because obviously they pay someone big dollars to, to be able to do that market research for them 
So I don't obviously steal their stuff directly, I just take their concepts and then work it all into my, my design. So doing that kind of planning is, is critical first. Um, the other thing always is review the niche and products available from the affiliate networks first. So my biggest problem I wanted to do on an Australian site a few years ago, but there was no affiliates until the Commission Factory came along. It really had a good range of products. There was a few other ones out there, but the products were, you know, some sold fake stuff, some just sold stuff that no one would even buy. Um, and they weren't competitive in price and things like that. So I just had to basically split, sit there and I did a few overseas sites first. Um, so really have a look around and talk to your affiliate networks first and see what they have. Um, the other thing obviously is, is check and make sure domain names and social media names are available. Uh, these days, you know, having a social media site, you know, like Facebook or Google Plus and things are so important, and Twitter and everything as well. So make sure when you're planning a site, to actually make sure your business name is actually available in those domain names. We can always do what I did and just come up with something that's a little bit different. And that's how I came up with Shop a lot. Um, also, you want to look at the purpose of the site too. So go and define your unique niche in the marketplace. I mean, there's, there's so many people doing different things and there's probably other people doing what you do. So how are you doing differently to everyone else? And um, for instance, with the shop a lot. My aim was to, of shop a lot was to create an Australian website where you can find and compare high quality products from trusted Australian based retailers all on one site. Um, and I guess part of the reason where I came about this idea was, um, and Trent would be able to vouch for me on this one, my wife loves to shop. Like a couple of years ago, she didn't know what the internet was until I told her you could shop online. <laughs> so now, now she gets out there all the time. And, um, and she'll, and you know, Trent's even seen me, he's been out my place, I'll be on one computer working while she's trying to buy things on the other machine. And she'll go and go, she's pretty clued up as far as where to look. Like, so she'll, if she's looking for an Oriton handbag, she'll go into Google and type in Oriton and usually go up to Oriton site first. But then she knows she can get a better price somewhere else. So she'll start looking around and usually she'll go back to Google but always click on the banner ads around there. So you know, she could end up anywhere. And about two hours later, she'll basically you know, yell out and say she's found one that you know, has half the price and does shipping and all that kind of stuff. But then I'll say, you know, whereabouts are they and who are they and do you know, do you know, do you know who this company even is? And it could be off in the Ukraine or something for, you know, for all we know. So I basically wanted to build a site where I haven't actually really shown her the site yet. I don't want to shopping on there. But, um, <laughs> basically, I wanted to build a site that would actually um, you know, create something that makes it really easy for everyone. And luckily, uh, people like Commission Factory now have all the products and the really good merchants there that can actually create this kind of thing. Um, the other thing I always look at too is defining your personal purpose of building a site. Now, I get people who come to me all the time, whether it's an affiliate marketed site or just a, a normal website in general. And you know, I ask them what, what their sort of purpose is as far as like business and, per, and personal, and it's just to make money. Now, you know, when you're actually building a site, and a lot of affiliate marketers will tell you that it's easy to make money online, which it is once you know how and if you have a passion for it. But if you haven't got that passion and you purely your drive is to make money, it's, you, you'll probably find that halfway through it, you'll get really sick of trying to build this thing and just give up and go back to your day job. And you'll be stuck in your day job for the next 30 years or so. So um, I always try, I, I sort of really believe in the whole dream board type thing where you set it up and put all the things you want to get there and basically then aim for those, those goals. So when you do get frustrated, you pull out your dream board and, and look at it. And I'm actually sort of you know, gone through mine and from like the $100,000 sales one month and things, I've gone for nice holidays in Tahiti and places like that. And it's all been because I've actually had that focus there and that drive that keeps me up late at night doing this kind of stuff. And I really enjoy doing it now too. Um, perception is a big thing and it basically perception is everything. Um, there's nothing the same these days with the internet. You can't look as big as all the big guys out there if you have a really strong online brand, online image, and a, and a site design, so I mean, literally, you can probably sit there in your underwear, or something, sit there in his underwear, you know, because his underwear he's got, and actually <laughs> look as big as all the. <laughs> Not a very nice thought, but anyway. <laughs> and, and you can basically look as big as the big companies out there, and again, you know, with sites, I'll show you what I've done with mine, you can actually look as big as the big guys as well, and you may want to be just a single person doing it from home. Um, if you can't achieve that yourself, like I'm sort of lucky that I've got. The design background and, and you know, build websites. But if you've got the idea there, sketch it out, my kind of thing, and even talk to somebody you know, else who can help you and outsource if you have to. There's, there's a lot of um, good places to outsource. Um, some of these for design in Australia include um, Design Crowd, where it's sort of competition based, so you can actually get a bunch of different designers working on things for you. Um, you can go to Theme Forest, as, as Dane said, yeah, you can buy themes or anything, or ready to go for WordPress. Um, on average, most of the theme products themes are around $35 to $45, and they're really big professional themes. So, what you have to really do is, is change your logo and things like that, and you've got a really nice looking site. Um, we can outsource the whole thing to Elance or Guru.com, um, where you know, there's people from all over the place, and you have to really be careful. It's a bit hit and miss. You could get you know, someone in India where a month down the track, when you're halfway through your site, they just disappear and you can't find them. But you know, again, it's about planning and finding the right company, you'll be right. Um, obviously, price is the most important thing in the whole thing. Um, ensuring you have access to quality products, trustworthy merchants and brands is, is critical. Um, as I said before, you know, there was before sort of people like Commission Factory came along, 
there's, there's hard to find any really good Australian merchants, and even overseas it's the same. There's, there's some great networks out there that will um, provide the, the products and things, but you don't really know how good they are and everything like that. So really do a bit of research first. Um, also research what commissions you actually receive um, and source high paying popular products. And obviously you know, if you've got a, you want to sell green widgets, well Zane probably doesn't market green widgets and there might be a need for green widgets and really realistically how much commission you're going to get for something that costs you 40 cents. So you want to look for things that actually pay high and also have high commissions as well and that are popular out there you'll make good sales that way. Um, make sure your products are available at competitive prices too. So for instance, um, I had a look through one of um, actually one of the commission factories uh, merchants there when I was doing my site putting the products in and I realised that they actually have um, vacuum cleaners and other white goods and things at least $100 cheaper than Harvey Norman. So, I mean, that for me, that's a, a massive sales you know, pitch for me because I can actually go around and tell people, obviously I'm not going to say on the web that I'm cheaper than Harvey Norman, but from a marketing point of view, it's good to actually know you're $100 below on vacuum cleaners and as the fridges are three or $400 cheaper, and that's even from their online store too. So, you know, you're actually beating the price. I mean, why wouldn't people buy it off you than, than, you know, instead of someone else? Um, and finally, you know, when you've got your site up and running, Obviously, promotion is the biggest thing. If, you know, if you've got the best side of the world, unless people know you're out there, um, it's no point. So there's a lot of free ways of doing this. Um, some of the ones, as I said before, uh, social media, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Google Plus are, are great ways. A lot of those you can actually brand up a bit now, and you, and you can build a real database behind those too. So it's a really good way of, um, of getting yourself out there um, to the marketplace. Uh, also, optimise your website products and title descriptions. Now, the system I use, which is called Datafeeder, you can actually do all this kind of stuff inside there, or you can get some of the free plugins for WordPress and sort of do optimization more there too. So you can actually take in the products that come through from the data feed and put unique text on every single one of those products. It takes a bit of time, obviously, but it feeds straight through your site, and I get really good results with that through data feeds. Um, so yeah, go and change all that kind of stuff. You can even change um, the, you know, as you can change the titles, you can even change the images if you want as well, the titles on the images. Um, also, add a, a sitemap and submit it to Google Webmaster Tools. So, for those of you who aren't familiar with Google Webmaster Tools, it's a free service uh, Google provide. And basically, you go in there, you upload your sitemap. It's also where you can do your analytics and things as well. But um, you put your sitemap up there. And if you're not sure how to generate a sitemap for WordPress, there's um, free plugins again. If you just type in XML sitemap um, and look for that plugin, it goes there. And you actually, every time you put something on your site, like a blog post, it will automatically go and ping Google Webmaster Tools and tell Google that you've done something different on your site. Um, again, Data Feeder actually has its own sitemap builder inside there as well, which will do the same thing. It just automatically feeds through to your webmaster tools. Um, another way of promoting for free is creating microsites for product reviews, blogging and article directory posts. And, um, and as Kerry can vouch, you know, this is one of the best ways of getting credibility up there. Plus you get a lot of linking going on and things like that, so you really get your, your traffic coming to your site from it. Uh, there's a few paid ways of, of promoting your site as well. When you first get started, you might want to do this. Um, I actually did this for, for shop a lot. I actually invested in um, Facebook ads and a few Google ads as well. These days I find um, for online stores, Facebook seems to work better just purely because you can really target the audience. Like I've gone in there and I can actually target my direct competitors like Meyer and David Jones and things like that. Purely not because people have liked that page, but they actually have shown some interest in it. So if they've ever posted anything up in their bio saying they have an interest in that shop or what they even book for something from there or even post a picture from there, it actually can pick up all that kind of stuff, so your ads only get shown to there. So therefore, my click rate, I'm sort of getting my, my, um, my cost per click kind of down to about 20 cents a click and getting a really good response. And they're all targeted audiences where I can actually go in using, um, Google have a tool in there with their analytics now where you can actually go and review it in live stats. So you can actually view it up, so I pull it up on one screen and I can see, can see who's actually going in from my ads and seeing which they're looking at. And it's all a free service, so it's really good for tracking what's working and what's not working. So I can actually see that the Facebook ads are working really well to my target audience. Um, you can also look at paying link building services. I'm not a big fan of that if you don't know who the companies are, if you sort of know they're trusted and have you know, found out from other people they're good, then it's a great way of building up um, yeah, your links on other sites and things. Uh, and also you can outsource your SEO if you're not really familiar with doing it or not confident of doing it yourself. Um, and there's a lot of companies that will do that for you too. Again, if you outsource that kind of thing, it's just good to watch over what they've done on your site and just, you know, and also you might have to go back and fine tune it a bit, but a good way of getting things up fast, especially if you've got thousands of products. I think I've got about 8,000 products on my site so far, and I've got a lot more to go, so obviously that's an ongoing thing for me, so I'll probably outsource to do that as well. Uh, and finally, it's basically the, the um, process. What you want to do when you get a site this kind of size, or you start doing multiple sites, it obviously takes up a lot of your time. So look for tools that you can actually um, do it automatically, like uh, fake, uh, 
sorry, WordPress itself obviously does the, the scheduled post. So if you're doing posting, blog posts and things, it'll actually post those up. You can do it like four or five in one go, let it post out over a period of a couple of weeks or whatever if you want. And that way it pings Google every time it does it rather than doing a bunch of posts in one go. Um, also for Facebook posts, Twitter and Pinterest, there's a lot of uh, tools like uh, Hootsuite, things like that, will actually do this kind of thing. It's, it's about $5 a month for Hootsuite. And I use it and it's really good and they just actually added a little thing now where um, what they call it uh, Hootlet. And basically it just goes on your dashboard and basically when you go to your own pages on your site, you can actually go and click that button and, and post it up. But then it will actually randomise when those posts go out for you. So you don't have to sit there and physically go, I want this to go out this hour, this hour, etc. It does it all for you. So it's really a really good little neat tool. What was that called? Um, it was actually Hootsuite, but it's called Hootlet. It's their little tool out there. Yeah. And if you pay a paid person, you'll get it free. And um, yeah, and this will actually be downloadable too. Um, for the very important people here, I've actually set up page VIP, which I shop lots of Comdra use, so just go to that address and you can actually download this presentation plus a bit more information about data Peter and the links to the site and everything. Yeah, it's shopalot.comdrau forward slash VIP. Two P's in Chopalot. What's the one you've taken? Yeah. <laughs> well, I want something a little bit different anyway that just stood out before. I think people are shoppers with two P's or the shop like works. Yeah. Um, so I'll quickly go through my site and how it works with data feeder. Now, um, now basically as I said, data feeder sort of works with in conjunction with WordPress. So for those of you, most people here sort of know what WordPress is, it's, it's a blog based software package where you can build really nice sites and it's free. And I actually recommend going and hosting yourself, not going through the WordPress.org site. Um, data Feeder is, is, as it says there, pretty much builds um, powerful web source simply. Um, data Feeder is actually a paid product because when you see what it does, yeah, it's worth the money. It's around about um, $27 a month, I think, for one site. We can do five sites for 47. 47. Yeah. And, then, and then they've got other packages as well for doing unlimited sites, things like that too. So it's, um, it's a pretty good little tool. <laughs> and this is actually what my, my site looks like. I haven't got live, so I wasn't sure if I had internet connection here or not, so I'm just taking screenshots for now. But um, interesting, what I've done is actually the, the very basic WordPress theme I've used for this, which is the 2010 theme. So I've just sort of built up from there, and I haven't actually outsourced it, I sort of built it myself, so there's more I can do to it, but it's sort of a good start, I think. Um, basically what I've done, I've actually put in, uh, changed the menu here to a mega menu, which basically means that when you roll over them, it will drop down and show all the sub-menus, sub-categories in a nice layout as well. And it means people can find everything within one click every time, so as they roll over here, they can go straight to whatever type of thing they're after, rather than to go and scroll through and scroll through pages. Um, you see here, I've actually got a logo slider, which that slider is actually just a, a plugin for WordPress, which is actually called Logo Slider. So if you want it, it's pretty good. And as you click on any of these, they actually do scroll across. They usually have six logos there, but I've actually bumped mine up to about eight for now, and I've actually you know, gone into the code and done it myself manually. And you can pretty much have unlimited there as well, and it just keeps going across. Um, each of those will actually click through to the actual brand over there, or you can do whatever you want there with it. Um, I've actually created a new slider here, and again, that's just a, a WordPress plugin. But I've actually put that inside the data feeder. So the way this site works, this thing here is actually um, WordPress itself. This inside here is actually generated by data feeder and it pulls into WordPress. So it's, it's sort of a plugin, well it actually is a plugin they have there, and it feeds any data you select from the back end into your site. Um, so anything on this area I've actually sort of created and put it into the back end and it feeds it back through again. Um, these things here, I've actually got like all the search tools and search for brands and even um, select a brand, which is a massive pull down menu of all the brands I have on there. They're actually all tools that come with the data feeder system as well. So as you add new products and brands and back end, it automatically generates those searches for you. It's not actually the WordPress search that works there. Um, so it finds everything straight away. Same with the other subcategories. As you add new subcategories in there, it will automatically generate subcategories. And also, as you add extra categories underneath those categories, it will put those in and they'll appear instead of these subcategories. And again, with refining by price, you can do that kind of thing too by, as soon as you have a price in the site there, um, it will make the refine your price for you. Um, if I scroll down the page a little bit, you see here I've actually got the sales special on here. So uh, a lot of the data feeds, a lot of feeds coming through data feeder, um, they have that ability to do that. Most of the um, affiliates, unfortunately, don't don't actually put the sale prices in, which is a bit of a pain. I've actually had to go and push these there manually myself. So the prices are actually correct and everything. I go and check those ones. Um, these prices will always be right, but what they were originally was what I had to go and check out myself. So as those come off there, then it'll, it'll automatically disappear. And, um, and again, that feed feeds through data feeder. I think. Um, I've got us out to do it, I think, every five minutes. So if anything happens on any of those affiliates uh, on the networks as they feed through the data feeder, it'll actually automatically go on my site within five minutes of any prices being changed or if the products drop off or anything. So rather than having to do it on a you know, keep checking it yourself, it actually does all that kind of work for you. Um, and the other thing I put in here too is a couple of banner ad spots here. 
And that's actually a, a, a plugin call. It's actually called Data Feeder as well, but it's totally different from this Data Feeder, but it's felt the same way. Um, and it's basically just a, a banner plugin which lets the banners rotate. So you can either use you know, your own merchant banners, things like that there, or you can actually sell that space to someone else as your site gets more popular and make a bit more money from it. And down the foot of the page, I've actually added for optimization things. I've actually added, added the um, popular brands, categories, a bit about us, we've got a page with all the retailers on there for optimization and stuff as well. Um, and also product reviews. Now, the product reviews purely just come straight from my blog post. So I am doing blog posting as well. But another thing Data Feeder actually does, it actually has a, a post feed as well built into it. So um, it's best to do unique content, which I'll show you how to do in a second. But it'll actually put its own feeds out there in Ping Google and, and all that kind of thing as well. So it's always working for you every day. You can actually do three or four ping, uh, posts each day. So I think already I've got a couple hundred posts, posts out which I've had to do no, no work at all for, which is great. And, um, and I've thrown in the AWeber uh, marketing form there as well. So if you want to sign up for mail, yes, they can. Um, now this is actually one of the category pages. So you see here, one thing about data feeder is actually lets you put in your own unique header up there as well. So I had to obviously create my headers myself. But I've actually put that in there and it just pulls those through depending on what page you're on. So it takes a bit of work. There's probably a couple of hours to do most of the pages in there. Um, but I think it's worth doing. It just you know, gives a nice sort of look and feel to it rather than selling you know, anything else up there or nothing up there. Um, and as you'll see, you've got the option here too of um, sorting it by the price from high to low, low to high, uh, randomizing it, alphabetical, things like that. So that's all part of the data press, um, data feeder, sorry, plugin. Um, Yeah, and this is actually one of the actual product pages themselves. So just say for instance, and this is actually the product I was talking about before with the vacuum cleaner. This is one reference, there's a few other ones, but you actually see here, having a sale price on there, you can actually see for this one here, and I've actually designed it for the logos to pop up so they know they're buying it from somebody else and not actually buying it from me. Um, but it actually pops up with their graphic too with their logo. And I'll actually show the sale price there, but you actually find <coughs> one other feature that's really great on um, data feeder is it has the ability to do comparison sets as well if you want. So you're not always going to have other products to compare with. But in this case, there were two different ones that had the same product and everything. So you actually see that while this site sale price might be from 849, which is what Harvey Norman charges at the moment, they've gone down to 756. But you actually see that clients online actually have it at 749. So it's even cheaper again. So you might like this brand and want to buy off them, or you can actually buy off clients online as well and get exactly the same product, just a little bit cheaper. Um, and obviously, as I said, as the products vary, the merchants upload their data feeds and things like that, that price could vary, and I can always take that product set out quite easily as well. Um, you also see the other things that all make me generate too are the breadcrumb filters there, which are, are pretty good, it always changes. Um, and this is the product that um, Zane was talking about before, the product information. Now, this is actually pulled through as just the, the standard text there, but you can actually go there and customise your own text and your own headings and things here, So which I've done on a lot of products already, so it just gives a better optimisation, and it gives you a really nice clean URL at the top as well as you do it. And um, another thing it lets you do too is actually put in what people have bought, you can call it whatever you want to call it basically, or other ones in that same category, so it gives you, that, you know, other options to buy too. And also, like the WordPress site, you can actually throw in all your own plugins and things there too, so I'll actually put in the, the Facebook comments box there, which is a standard plugin, but what I've actually done is taken the code and put it into data feeder, so data feeder actually pulls it back through again as well. So it's, it's pretty, pretty neat what it does. Um, so basically what is data feeder, we've sort of explained it in a way already, but basically it's a system that Feeds you the affiliate product, um, feeds and other information through to your website automatically. And as I said, it updates very regularly, so it's really good. Um, and also, all the product information comes through, yeah, as I said, it updates on your site automatically. So there's nothing you have to do really at all. You can go in there and find you to add new products anytime you want, it's quite easy. And then you just go to your site, there's a button on the back, and you plug it, so you just click that button, and it'll make up the updates and feed if you want it done straight away, or you can, you can wait till it does it automatically. And this is actually the back of the data feeder now. It's a bit hard to see from there, but you'll see down the side here, this is all the affiliate networks that are available, and it scrolls down a bit further. And you'll see here there's a few Australian ones there, like there is um, Mission Factory, there's ClickScore, there's um, Commission Monster, things like that. And you'll see on the bottom, these are the ones that have actually got going at the moment. So to add more, you just simply click the Select More button in there, um, and you can actually see the other ones that are actually available. So as, as new affiliates come on board or, or disappear or whatever, you can just add them on here. And you can see there's one highlighted out there, that, they've actually got the same one going as Commission Factory, but I chose to go Commission Factory just because I, I like this system better. So you can actually block ones out as well if you want to. So Chris, is that actually on your WordPress site, or that's just... Yeah, I've uh, this... Uh, oh, no, that oh, panel you showed us before on uh, your no, data this, feeder, this here, yeah, that's this, their website? Or that's actually your... their website, yeah. Okay. And as I said, basically when you have to do this stuff, as soon as you press one of these buttons here at all, it's totally live. So providing your feed goes fairly live pretty fast, it'll just go straight through. Like, you know, there's no delay or anything. 
that. Um, now this is actually how the sort of the actual price when you select the bucks look. So you actually see here a selection of set up a heap of categories here, and that's probably the slowest part of the whole site. You have to physically go in there and set up your own categories. But saying that, you actually see along the top here, you've got your factories, the store, and the categories here. You can actually put out description tags and things on those categories themselves as well. So you can actually really optimize up well through data feed without having to do anything WordPress at all. And, um, and again, you can re-optimize that anytime you want quite easily. Um, for selecting products, you can see here, you've got basically, I just go into say vacuum cleaner down here, and I'll let you add the products here now. It gives you all the list of all your affiliates you've selected on that last page, and it'll show them all down here. So you'll see there's, you know, it tells you who the, who the site is, and it puts the logo of all your actual merchant there as well. So it's, it's a really easy system to use. And you simply go on here and click, oh, I want to add this product, or I want to create a comparison type this, or I want to block it from the store or the category directly. And then you've also got a little more information button here, which um, lets you do all the changes to it, which I'll show you in a second. Or you can actually go and find similar products too. So if you had a, a site selling, say, candles or something like that, and you want to just find just candles, um, you can actually go in there and, and say, okay, I want to find other candles that are red or whatever. And it'll actually go and let you find other candles similar to that. So it's pretty good. Um, this is actually where you do the, the change of the, um, the text and things like that. So as I said, if I actually could scroll down, you can actually see where the images were. It'll actually give you the description name up here, which you can put the custom one in there if you want. That's the price of fees for automatically. So as I said, if there was a sale price, you would actually put the sale price in here and put the proper price down further. And again, these are the description. So you can actually add as much text as you want there in the description to, um, to make it rain. And if you actually want to get more information about the product, you can just simply click on the, the link to um, the affiliate site, which will take up, take up to that page, and you just go and pull whatever text you want off and put it into your own thing here. And, um, and this is actually the layout of the page comes up my, well, this is actually a category page. So, um, and you can have um, multiple category pages too, and multiple other pages, whatever you want. So, if I want to have a, a particular type of category page, or a particular like, to say, the backing page, but I want to be different for whatever other product it would be, like might be fashion or something, you can actually choose different pages to appear for different categories, which is pretty pretty good. Um, you actually see what this is, is it's sort of the layout of how the page works in my site. So, this top part here, where it says text, is actually uh, where the banner shows at the top of the page, then you've got the breadcrumbs, then you've got the list of categories, then you've got the, um, the product list and things like that in comparison set, and this one here is actually where I've had the Facebook ad, which is another text one. So you can actually put anything you want in these sort of boxes here uh, via text or via you know, whatever you want. You can change them around and move them up and down, move whatever order you want. So you're not limited, you can actually split it, so if you want to have you know, more things on one page. And things like the category list too, um, you actually see if you click on these buttons here, it actually say, do you want to have three, category, three across the page, or four across the page, or just one across the page, or whatever? It's very easy to adapt to whatever your needs are. You don't really have to have any, any web skill at all to do it. Um, but if you are a sort of technical person, this is where your actual hard coding goes into it. And they've actually made it very easy though. Like, it looks like a little, little box of gobbledygook there now. But the way they've actually done this is you can actually go and change fonts to be bold and things like that. We can use your own style sheets and pull them through. But they've actually got um, snippets down the side here. So if there's a particular snippet you want, like say for instance you want the price, the price tag things to be, or the buttons or whatever, to be say blue or green or whatever, you simply just click on the snippet, and as you click it, it'll actually put the code in the right spot for you, and then you save it. So even though it looks like a lot of hard work, I've actually done nothing there really to make it work to the level it's working at now. And that's pretty much an overview of how it works, I guess. It's um it's quite easy, and, and you can actually go and have a look at the website. As I said, this whole presentation is on my site, and there's a link there to Data Peter, and on their own website, they've got you know, piles of videos and things, so that's where I sort of learned how to do everything here. Plus, um, the guy that works there, I can't remember his name, Eric, he's actually on there all the time, like I'll, I'll post a, a message out there if I need a hand or something, and literally in about three or four minutes, I've actually got a response every single time. And there's little things I had on my site, like when I was trying to do the brand thing on the side there, and for some reason on the home page, it kept coming up with an error message. So, he actually fixed it, fixed it for me within about five minutes and now yeah, everyone's got the same access as me. So he's, he's always keen to come there and help you work on it. And I'm sure there's about 20 Eric's out there. I don't think it's just one Eric, but <laughs> so, yeah, they, they, always, they always seem to be there to fix things for you. So it's just a brilliant service. So I can't really fault it. And you know, I'm, I'm very rapid, you know, the response I'm getting from it everything already. So, so I sort of fully really recommend checking it out and seeing what you can do with your site. And that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So how many of you next month have you got going through shop well, I actually, well, actually I actually started this two weeks ago, this site, so it's, oh. it's pretty slow. I've, I've, I've had a look at today, I've got about 150 people come through today, so it's not too bad, all you needs. Early days. Yeah. yeah, it's early days, yeah. yeah. And I'm not really doing it like this, so I'm doing a, a few, you know, a bit of Facebook ads on there, but um, nothing like what I should be. I'm still, still fine-tuning the site a little bit as well, so I don't really want to push it too hard.
this stage. And I will say I have to go through a lot more products yet. We put unique text through all of them as well too, but I'm working on that every night pretty much. Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, Chris just put up a post in our Facebook group and said, have, have a look at my new site, what, tell us what you think. And that's when we, most of us saw it and said, well, we've got to talk about this at the next meetup. So it was really, really very new. Yeah. Chris, yeah, yeah. I have to say that you inspired me because I, I saw it, went and thought, wow, <laughs> went to Data Feeder, and Shannon yeah. and I have been building, we've, we've built the store. Yeah. And we're doing it now. And yeah. Like, I'm, I'm technical, but not that technical. Mm. I'm not a programmer, but I can do it. Yeah, well, my background, as, as I said, my background is basically, basically web design and graphic design, but I'm more of a designer, not really yeah. a technical person. So, as I actually built this myself, and there's a lot of you know, hard hours and things, and sort of banging my head against the desk and stuff, but I sort of, I'm pretty happy with the results so far and everything with it. And as I said, I, you know, I do build simple WordPress sites, but usually off themes, I can build HTML sites easily, but this kind of thing is a bit different because it does, it is half done in data feeder and half done in WordPress. It does take your head a while to get your head around it, but once you actually get the hang of it, it's just brilliant what you can do. And you're always, like, I was looking for new things I could do all the time, and it just seems to do everything. And the great thing about it, too, if you want, it does have to be just fed through, like, I use, um, you know, Commission Factory, and I also use Clicksclaw and a few of the other Australian merchants on there, or affiliates on there. But you can actually put in your own products, if you have your own shop as well, you can actually bring your own product feeds in there as well and put them in there as well. So obviously, products don't update unless you actually manually update them yourself, but you can actually physically go in there and put products in there and it will drive straight through your own website as well. So it's pretty cool that way too. Could you also put that straight through to data, your own products straight through data feeder as well? Yeah, that's right, yeah. So you just do the same thing. You basically have to do it manually though. Like, I don't know if there's a, a CSV feeder in your memory, so explore that. But how I pulled up the screen before, you can actually do it that way and just link your images and things and post it and just come straight off the site. Yeah, it blends in with everything else. Chris, so, yeah. does it only work with WordPress? Yeah, I think, all, I think it does, yeah. Yeah, it would be. Because yeah, I've actually got the WordPress plugin which goes on the other end, and so you just download that plugin, and that's how it makes everything work. It just picks up your license number and feeds through. Because okay. mm. you were saying about the special prices, you had to go there and manually change that. Yeah. So unfortunately, they every time they have a special. Yeah, sale. unfortunately, it's, they, it's got the ability for them to do that, but unfortunately, a lot of the affiliates don't actually do it. So you find all the American affiliates and you know, over in the UK and stuff, they're actually embracing that kind of stuff. And it's great for as an affiliate marketer because that way you can always get the latest sales specials on there. Um, and I'll push that more, kind of thing more on the pages too if I put on the individual pages that I'd actually put specials on each page if I could. But unfortunately, it's a lot of work at the moment because none of them are actually using it. But the tool is in there in place for them to do it. They just have to be able to provide on their feed. And a few people on the, on the data feed, they've got a massive big forum in the back end as well. So everyone gets on there and helps each other. They've got one week and showcase the sites. And so I put mine up there and I've had a few guys asking how I did this and how I did that. And everyone shares. It's a really good community in there as well. But, um, but yeah, that's one of the biggest things in there, I guess, is that everyone's saying no, none of the affiliates are really pushing that kind of thing yet, unfortunately. So, it's uh, by, by affiliates, you mean the company? Yeah, well, the actual, yeah, the, sorry, the actual merchants aren't really pushing it for the affiliates yet. So, when they start sort of realising that you can do this kind of thing, then I think more of them pick up on it because obviously it'll make more sales for them. Yeah, because it's a big time consuming to go. Yeah, that, it's, probably to check what, it's literally probably the smallest thing on the yeah. site to do. And so, that's why I made it on the front page. And again, that front page, you can sort of adjust that to be random posts and things as well if you want. I've just selected like 12 of the sales specials on there and made those 12 sort of rotate. So I've got a few behind the scenes that one shop on the first page, but they will rotate every time it does an update. Yeah. So you can actually have some set for random, some set for high to low, some set alphabetically, whatever you, whatever you like. Mm. So each product page is actually a custom post. Pretty much, yeah, that's right, yeah. I mean, wait, so it works two ways. It actually brings those products in and puts them more into whatever, however you want the design. I've seen a bunch of other guys who have, like, say, clothing sites. They'll actually run these with the image there, the text over here with the button, and they have, like, a bunch of the pages there. I've sort of done the more traditional shopping cart look. Um, and also, you'll find on the other browsers, too, it doesn't actually do it on Safari, but the other browsers will do the click to a large image straight away as well. So that's all built into the, into the site, too, which is great. But yeah, all those ones you have on there, if you've got unique text on them, um, it'll actually Produce that feed for you and keep trickle feeding that out every every day. Well, you can do that inside data feed, can't you? you go and That's right. Yeah, it does it all from there. So it's just brilliant. That gets a lot of traffic to the site. That that all that feed. You just go and copy and paste in or spin them back in again. Yeah. More of a business question rather than a technical yeah. question about it. What's your feeling and what was your thought process around creating the shop that has everything versus the niche 
Well, I've sort of done, I've done a few niche ones. As I said, they worked really well as far as like travel goes. Like my, my, I think my best travel site was actually a, a little Whit Sunday site I set up. And I just get some more traffic out of everything. It's just purely based on Whit Sundays and everything. And so, and that's probably still one of my biggest um, marketing sites kind of thing, I guess. I don't want to redo any work on it really. So I just want to do something a little bit different. But as I've sort of researched how it worked for me first, and looked at um, you know, how you can actually do the unique optimization stuff. And I mean, I build, I build other websites and that kind of stuff as well, which you know, aren't really in the niche market or anything like that, and they rank really well. And it purely goes down to the SEO, I think, really. Like, obviously, you've got a bit more keyword density on a, on a niche site. But um, I guess my advantage with this too is I looked at the, the actual feeds that were coming through as well, and I found that a lot of the, a lot of the suppliers there haven't got much text in there. Like, so actually, one thing with Global, I've noticed they don't have any text on their products at all at the moment. Yeah, that was a real struggle getting the feed. Yeah. yeah. And so I was going to say, from my point of view, though, it's, it's brilliant because I can actually go and optimize up like anything, and I'll probably actually outrank Global for their own products from their own store. So <laughs> I always have this advantage. So it's really good. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not too worried. I'm getting you know, pretty good traffic already because I find that people come through looking for one thing. And they'll go searching for other things, whereas a lot of people will go to one site looking for something, and if you haven't got it there, they'll go off to their competitors. So I thought I'll give it a go and see how it works. Ready? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was very good. Um, are you going to say a few words, Karen? Um, I'll say a few words. They messed up and didn't give us tea and coffee. <laughs> but they've got tea and coffee.